이번에는 나라박 소식입니다. 1차 세계대전 때 심각한 갈등을 보였던 서부전선에서 크리스마스 정신은 48시간의 휴전을 가져오게 했었다고 합니다. 이 시간만큼은 예배와 찬양으로 적군과 아군이 아닌 친구가 되었다는데요. 총알이 빗발치던 전쟁터에서 있었던 아름다운 크리스마스 사건 지금부터 전해드립니다. To the glory of God. Each year, Andrew Hamilton lays a wreath at the World War I monument in his small English village, a tribute to the grandfather he barely knew. What do you remember of him? I just remember an old man who shouted a lot uh, because he was deaf and he uh, lost his hearing really during the First World War. So he was really quite frightening. And then uh, when I read his diaries, I was amazed, I suppose, at the... Um, the the life that he'd been involved in. This one is is the original one, which he would have kept in his top pocket. As Hamilton writes in his book, Meet at Dawn Unarmed, his grandfather, Captain Robert Hamilton, kept diaries from 1913 to 1950. Most years were fairly mundane, with one remarkable exception, 1914. Wednesday the 5th of August, Wire to mobilize at 5.30 a.m. Hamilton was part of the initial wave of British troops in what came to be known as the First World War. The general consensus at the time was the fighting would be over by Christmas. Just one day earlier, German troops had invaded Belgium. And then England joined the fight. Ironically, the leaders of the opposing sides were first cousins, Germany's Kaiser Wilhelm II and King George V of England. Caught in the middle, the tiny country of Belgium. This very provincial, rural area of Belgium was almost at at the center of the world attention. I grew up listening to stories of elderly people in my village that had to do with the war. German troops cut a path of destruction through Belgium into France. Allied forces stopped them outside of Paris, pushing them back, but only so far. A stalemate ensued, with both sides digging in, literally. Trench warfare on the Western Front had begun. September the 18th, several men killed and wounded in the trenches by shell fire. This was, without exception, the most miserable night ever spent. I stood all night in water up to my ankles and the rain pouring down. This is one of the original trenches from more than 100 years ago. Two parallel zigzagging lines built by the German and Allied forces stretching more than 450 miles. In some places, the opposing armies were only 50 yards apart. Both uh, parties have have, uh, dug in and the coldest is coming in. And so all of a sudden, the first enemy is is not your opponent to the other side of the no man's land, but it's the cold. By the end of November, there were over one and a half million casualties on the Western Front. As the stalemate continued, it became clear the war would not be over by Christmas. The outside world pushed for an official Christmas truce, including Pope Benedict IV, who asked, that the guns may fall silent, at least upon the night the angels sang. British General Horace Smith Dorian, however, issued a directive forbidding fraternization, saying it destroys the offensive spirit in all ranks. December the 24th, we marched up to our trenches, a little downhearted to spend Christmas Day in them. Artist Bruce Barron's father was machine gun officer in Captain Hamilton's Royal Warwickshire Regiment. He recounted his war experiences in the book Bullets and Billets. I remember at the time being very down on my luck about this, as everything in the nature of Christmas Day festivities was obviously knocked on the head. But the Germans didn't let war stop their celebration. They displayed Christmas trees in their trenches and on December 23rd held a church service and a bombed-out sugar refinery. School teacher Kurt Zemisch served in the 134th Saxon Regiment. Like Hamilton, he kept a diary during the war. We sang the song, This is the day that the Lord has made. The celebration moved many to tears. 
I think Christmas in those days was uh, much more an important festival um, in, in the German culture than it was in, in uh, French or Belgian or, or uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, countries. I ordered my men that on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day no shots were to be fired from our side if it could be avoided. Then something extraordinary happened. No sooner had we settled into the trenches, we and the Brits tried to draw attention to each other. The spirit of Christmas began to permeate us all and we tried to plot ways and means of making the next day, Christmas, different in some way to others. An Englishman called over to our trenches, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, to which I replied to him and his comrades, thank you very much, I wish the same to you. After months of vindictive sniping and shelling, this little episode came as an invigorating tonic and a welcome relief to the daily monotony of antagonism. On Christmas morning, I woke very early. It was a perfect day, a beautiful, cloudless day. December the 25th, a day unique in the world's history. I met their officer and we arranged a local armistice for 48 hours. As far as I can gather, this effort of ours extended itself throughout the whole line as far as we could hear. It's Christmas time, uh, the soldiers under his command have had a rotten time and he was deeply Christian himself, so it was natural to allow it to happen. So started the Christmas celebration, the celebration of love when enemies became friends for a short time. Here they were, the actual practical soldiers of the German army, there was not an atom of hate on either side that day. Although fighting continued on most of the Western Front, the unauthorized truce extended along virtually all of the 27-mile length of the British line. Both sides helped bury their dead. They exchanged gifts like food, tobacco, and buttons. And in some sectors, they even played soccer in no man's land. It makes them happy because they feel human again. Whereas the industrial warfare of, often reduces them to cannon fodder, often reduces them to killing machines. This was all so beautiful, yet strange. I will never forget this Christmas celebration. The last I saw of this little affair was a vision of one of my machine gunners, who was a bit of an amateur hairdresser in civil life, cutting the unnaturally long hair of a docile German. A very Merry Christmas and a most extraordinary one. But I doubled the sentries after midnight. There would be three more Christmases on the Western Front before the war came to an end, but nothing quite like this would ever happen again. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle later described it as one human episode amid all the atrocities which have stained the memory of the war. John Jessup, CBN News, reporting in Flanders, Belgium.